The next thing I want to do is put something inside of the class. So I'm going to switch back to my front viewport. And here is my surface right here. I'm going to go up here and hide this surface because I don't want to see it right now. Uh, I'm also going to just hide this box here. So I'm back to my lines. Now, what I want here is I want a line that goes across here that represents the surface level of the liquid that's in the glass. So it's going to actually be another revolve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a line here. And I'm going to use, actually I'm going to just switch back to my curves layer. I'm still running the line. There we go. Got to make sure that check mark is next to there. I'm still running the line program. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to snap to my near point. And this is, how, this is what near point does is it just grabs the nearest point on any object. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to drag across. I'm going to hold the shift key down because I want to make sure that this surface level is the same. And I'm going to get here and snap to near. And I'm also going to make sure that it also snaps to int and that makes it perfectly level. Okay. Now the other thing I could do is if I didn't want to fuss with that, I could just draw a straight line straight across and I could select everything in the window there and I could just trim the parts that I don't want. I don't want that or that and then I can just delete that. Now, of course, if I want to get super detailed, and when do I not want to get super detailed, I could do that with a control point curve too. And again, I'm going to start at the same point right here. I'm going to run along here, use this curve as kind of a guideline. And then I'm going to get here and I'm going to jump up. And if you remember in the coffee mug, I had a curve that was a meniscus. So this is the liquid in the glass that is kind of creeping up on the side here. And that just helps adds a little detail there. So I'm going to delete that line right there. So I used a control point curve to make that. And I don't actually need these points right here. Okay, I did need that point right there. I don't want it there. So you can see those two points keep it flat and then it curves upwards. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use this line here because I don't need a, another line in here. I could use this as the outside line of the liquid inside the glass. I'm going to use my split command. So the split command, select object to split. I'm going to select this, press enter when done, select cutting objects. Now I can either select an object that intersects it or I can select a point so the point to split the curve is the end point of that first line right there. Press enter. Okay, so now that line and that line should connect together. Now I'm going to want to join those together. I'm going to select them both and join them. So they're one open curve. That's the thing I want to look for, one open curve. Uh, I might be a little concerned that this is what's called a discontinuity where it doesn't actually curve around. That might do some weird things on a surface, but it's such a small little detail, I'm probably not gonna notice at all. Anyways, now I wanna make sure, of course, this ends on my rotation axis. This ends on my rotation axis. Uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna make a new layer here, actually. And I'll call this one wine. Okay, so that's gonna be the a new layer here for the material inside. I'm going to select that. Uh, again, I'm going to do a surface revolve. My endpoints are anywhere on this line. Doesn't matter. I don't have to pick the endpoints. I just have to pick draw a line along here and hit full circle. Okay. And there we go. So now what I should have, so there is a bowl. Okay, and we'll take a look in shaded mode here. And again, th that might be a bit of a problem, that discontinuity. It doesn't seem to be a problem in rendering it. I'd be curious to see. I've... 
Might have to go back and fix that later, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now. And I'm gonna bring this back here. All right, so there's my liquid and there's my glass. I'm gonna switch back to my rendered mode. And again, you can see that this is going to be, my glass is still glass. And when I select things, notice of course, if I click right here, it tells me, well, what do you wanna select? Because this arrow is hovering over two things. There's the surface, which is my glass, and there's the other poly surface, which is the wine inside. Okay. And of course, the difference between a surface and a poly surface, a surface is connected by smooth curves. And it's just one continuous surface. And I mentioned that this is a poly surface because it's actually two surfaces. That's where that discontinuity came from. And just real quick, I'll just show you one of the things, a surface like this, I can turn on its control points. Okay, So there's the control points for a surface. That's one continuous surface. And if I wanted to, I could distort that using my control points. Now a poly surface, if I try and turn on the control points, I cannot turn on points for poly surfaces. Okay, so that could have been a problem if I'd wanted to use my control points to distort this, kind of like when we did the rubber duck. So anyways, not really critical because like I said, all I'm doing is rendering it, I'm not modifying it later, but that's just an important point to know. There's a difference between a poly surface and a surface. You can also see that here in object properties. This is a closed solid poly surface, and this is just a closed surface. This is made up of multiple surfaces, and that's not. Uh, I'm gonna go into my materials menu, and I'm gonna use, I don't want a layer material. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna use a new material Now, of course, I want something transparent. I'm just going to try this. I don't know how this is going to look, but it might be kind of interesting. So let's go with uh, Ruby. Make it nice and red. Okay. And I'm just going to try something here. I've got my ground plane running. I'm going to turn my ground plane off. Just going to see if that speeds up my rendering time a bit. Okay, so once again, I'm going to pan this so it is now. And again, you can sort of see there's my glass, there's my liquid. They are roughly shaded when I hit the render button. And I'm going to start rendering this. That's an interesting effect. Now, there are some artifacts in here. You can see some odd little re internal reflections. These little diamonds are caused by the fact that I have two surfaces that are right on top of each other. So there's a little bit of an issue with the renderer there that's uh, glitching up a little bit. So, and again, you can see the Ruby actually looks pretty good. I like those odd little internal inclusions in there. And of course I can go back, I can change those materials, but of course, three minutes and 18 seconds, okay, gonna take a little while. Now, there's also a render preview button, which will give you kind of more of a rough, a little bit faster. It doesn't take a look at all of the inflections and ref infusions and reflections and so on. It just does sort of most of them. So this only takes about 30 seconds. And it's a very low quality picture, but it just gives me kind of a rough idea what my objects are gonna look like. The other thing I did was I made sure the image size is small. It's only 800 by 600. The smaller the image you make, then the faster it's going to render. If you make it bigger, it's gonna take a lot more time. So you can see this is a fairly low resolution picture of the rendering and it only took about 30 seconds to do so like i said rendering even with 
fairly decent graphics cards, uh, especially with a lot of transparent objects and lots of reflections, it does take a little bit, a little while. This is why, of course, whenever you see stories about uh, 2D an or sorry, 3D animation, uh, Pixar movies, how long it takes to make or render the scenes because there's so many reflections and refractions and light plays around in various places. So there's my wine glass right there with some liquid in it. Let's see what it looks like if I go to the ray traced mode. So here's the real time rendering ray trace mode. And again, you can see it's taking time rendering it. Uh, this would be nice. I can hear my graphics card in the background. The fans are starting to spin up. This would be really nice if it would actually work well, but it's going to take a while for this one as well. So there is a real-time rendering, but it takes quite a long time. There's quite a lot of lag.